the North Sea rages. The foaming waves gnaw at Jutland's dunes. The current takes the sand northwards along the west coast of Jutland until it finally finds peace. Skagen's Point is sheltered from the swells of the Atlantic. The coasts of Norway take the destructive force of the waves. Over 7,000 years, the ocean current and wind have created 300 square kilometers of sandy headland, north of Hirtzels and Fredrikshavn. North of Skagen, in Grenen, the sea builds Denmark's newest land a wilderness where Denmark's nature is free to roam. The waves create a landscape of sand dunes and lagoons. They're called ridges and swales. On Skagen's point, some plants have been able to evolve independently from the rest of the world. They say that these species are endemic, which means Skagen helleborine, Nordic blueberry eyebright, and the Vensusel orchid are found only in Denmark. The EU asked Denmark to designate the country's most valuable natural areas. Greenen has been included in this designation, which makes it part of the EU's Natura 2000 sites. A little further south lies one of Europe's largest June heaths, Robjerg Heath and Hulsi Heath. They are also Natura 2000 sites. The Robierg dune lies on this enormous heath. It's winter. For more than 400 years, Northern Europe's largest migrating dune has been shifting. The dry wind sweeps over the dune's wet sand. The moment a grain of sand is dry, the wind takes hold of it. Three point five million cubic meters of fine drifting sand rolling along with the wind. The dune lives and breathes. A dune preservation stake was put in front of the dune. The stake was covered by sand and only appeared again forty years later. This allowed a better understanding of the dune's migration. It moves 15 meters every year. The only sand left behind is that which the groundwater keeps moist. The porous sand absorbs rainwater and leads it out to sea. The sea, the waves and the current, the sun, wind and sand jointly create a momentum in nature that is rarely allowed to express itself. But it does so at Grenen and on Robjerg and Hulsi Heath. Without this momentum, the habitats of some of our most unique plants and animals would disappear. They would die out. Naturen betyder rigtig meget i Frederikshavn Kommune, ikke alene fordi vi har meget af den, men fordi vi jo gerne viser den frem, vi bruger den, vi vil også gerne passe rigtig meget på den. Borgerne bruger naturen, den er helt speciel heroppe hos os, synes vi, vi har det her rå landskaber. Men vi får også rigtig mange gæster, der bruger naturen. The bitterns, which nest on the tip of Skagen's point, are perhaps now regretting their decision to stay throughout the winter. For those people who have tried to make a living on the heath, life has not always been easy. Storms, sand, floods and lack of firewood have been a big part of life at Skagen's Point. Der var jo fra helt tilbage fra slutningen af 1600-tallet eller 1500-tallet faktisk og 250 år frem, der var der sandstorme som hervede eh egnen her og navnlig den her del af Skagen og af store miler og de der miler, de blev samtidig nær sagt kastet ind over egnen. Og så blev gårdene ødelagte, og folk måtte flytte. 
og øh, begynde forfra. Det var noget med at begynde sit liv forfra igen og igen. Skagen's locals had learned to cope. During World War II, several hundred were engaged in peat digging on Hulsi Heath. The peat is created by sphagnum moss and plant residues in the swales. It has later been compressed by sand layers and it is now emerging at the beach due to erosion of the coastal dunes by the sea. It is therefore named sea peat. Luckily for nature, drainage was never really that effective. The moist heath is a paradise for cranes, which as early in the year as February, March, herald the coming of spring to Skagen's Point. Spring draws both tourists and locals out into the point's nature. Vi lavede jo klitarbejde her på et tidspunkt, så hele området sådan her bag ved os og det her den her flade, det var sand og vådt sand og nogle få spredte planter. Og efter hånden som at planterne de indvandrer, det er jo sådan ligesom resten af naturen på Skagens øje, så kan man sige det er den dynamik der hører til når nyt land det bliver skabt. Vi er blevet sådan lidt enige om i dagens anledning. Så skulle jeg tage, tage sådan en lille havtårn med. Og, og, og man må jo godt se, at det, det er faktisk så klart, som det kan blive. Og der er nogen, der har et lille problem med, med at få havtårnen klart. Så må man bare filtrere en ekstra gang. Vi siger tre bærer om dagen, det er nok godt. Robiag June spreads death and destruction before it. Nothing survives 40 years in the sand's embrace. Nevertheless, the June drags a trace of life across Skagen's point. The landscape the June leaves is the closest we can get to the Denmark the ice left behind when it withdrew after the last ice age. The sand desert turns into a haven for those species which were the first to occupy the land and are adapted to a life in which nutrients are not a given. From the dune you can hear the sure sign of spring, the croak of the Natterjack toad. The Natterjack toads have found their way down to the oasis ponds to mate and lay eggs in the shallow, sun-warmed water. When a dune migrates, it doesn't just leave behind shallow pools on the heath. It also leaves two long sand dunes. Like the beach dunes, they are called ridges. On Hulsi Heath lies a ridge left behind by a giant dune that once migrated across Skagen's Point, torn back a ridge. In a small windbreak, something is moving. Something that digs small pits in the sand. It is a larva of an ant lion. It's digging a small funnel in the sand. A red forest ant struggles to walk on the hot sand. The ant lion's larva has developed its very own unique hunting technique. The ant crawls into the funnel. The ant lion gets the sides to tumble down by digging and throwing the sand up onto the ant. The ant tries to get up, but there's no turning back. In the sand, ants cannot defend themselves. The ant must give up.
In a belt running along Zealand, Anholt, Leisu and Skagen Point, there is less than half the amount of rainfall as in the rest of Denmark. There are more hours of sunshine in the desert belt. The Nordic ant lion lives on the desert belt because the microclimate of the Earth's surface here is warmer than the rest of the country. Tornbacher Ridge, along with large parts of the heath, is about to turn into forest land. Mountain firs block the sunlight to the mosses, lichen, and the ant lion's habitat with their shadow. Jürgen Trollborg has lived next door to the heath all his life. He remembers clearly how it once appeared. I'm here for a half years ago. There were many trees that you can see there out in the far distance, and there was no one. But they have come more and more. And I'm here for 10 years ago. Røde herude. Men da der var træer dengang, så er der altså ingenting imod det, der er kommet. Far out on Hulsi Heath is Fluerskålen, Flyer Forest. It was planted during the war as an employment project and as a place that the British airmen used as landfall. Today, this forest and many other small and large plantations are spreading themselves across the June Heath. This has brought Frederickshavn and the Nature Agency together to safeguard the nature on the June Heath by getting rid of the invasive trees. We have set this project in place because the trees, the green trees, the trees, are made of fantastic Danish green nature, which is trodd of tilgrowing with Danish trees. And to get a tilgrowing with Danish trees, there are not the right insects, there are not the right small fish, there are not the whole of the trees from the whole of 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 the whole tilgroningen sker med ikke dansk. Så derfor har vi startet et projekt her med at sikre den oprindelige danske natur og hele den rige biodiversitet. The first task will be to remove the forests within the heath. It is a difficult task because there are not many roads. At the same time, the traffic from such large machines will really damage the ground. It's for this reason that the forest on the heath must be felled with a chainsaw. Slowly the sun will return to the forest floor, and in time, the light will cause the June heath plants to return. The other end of the forest har sandfyningen jo gjort, at der ligger et tyklet sand på træerne. Og normalt kan man jo skove med sådan en motorsavskæde i ja, en uge, 14 dage måske. Men her oplever vi faktisk, at kæden er slidt op løber to dage og er klar til at smide. Det er sand er slidt hvidende over, så den knækker. Der har været plantet rigtig meget ikke hjemmehørende på Skagen Åde. Og med det her projekt, der prøver vi at få de store kager væk, sådan at vi får stanset frøspredning. Det er rigtig vigtigt for os. Og det gælder både de eksotiske fyrearter, grænarterne og også sådan noget som rynkerose. The only place where the marsh fertility butterfly has survived in Denmark is in northern Jutland. It is one of Denmark's rare butterflies. All butterflies are associated with one plant, a plant that they lay eggs on and that their larvae can eat. The marsh fritillaries plant is the scabious. The plant's habitat has disappeared and this has meant that the marsh fritillary population has declined tremendously. Out along the west coast, on a 30 kilometer long coastline on Hirtshals, lives one of Denmark's most rare butterflies, the northern brown Argus butterfly. Today, it can be found in only a few places along the coast. The northernmost is here, right behind the outermost range of dunes at Skiveren. Lars Andersen has been interested in butterflies since he was 13. He works as a biological consultant and has helped to map the spread of the marsh fritillary butterfly in northern Jutland. 
He has now returned to see how it's going with the northern brown Argus. And what he sees is discouraging. The brown Argus's larvae feed on the bloody geranium, and that is being supplanted by the invasive beech rose, or rosehip, as it's also called. En af årsagerne, vi fik rynke rose i Danmark, det er, at man fik den jo gardneret, man fandt ud af, at den kunne vokse ud i klitten. Så derfor blev den plantet i rigtig mange øh, klitrækker i øh, forbindelse med sommerhuse. Og med det, man har jo tænkt over, det var, at den kunne sprede sig med lynets has, som den har gjort. Ikke? Altså, det er også en trussel mod klittens øh, unikke natur, som den blod stokken af. Hvis den ikke er der, så er sommerfuglen her heller ikke. At dens krav til levesteder er så specielle, det er jo kun planten. Det er også mikroklimaet, der spiller afgørende ind. Altså, selvom vi har blodet stokken af mange steder i Danmark, så er det en sted, hvor, hvor de koncentrerer det her op, hvor du finder de der store, tætte populationer af blodet stokken af, hvor de står simpelthen i mængder i klitrækken. Altså, det er jo ikke en underholdningsindustri, det her. Det er jo en sårbar natur. Og hvis der kommer for mange besøg i sådan et område her, så vil det jo efterhånden ligne sådan en øh, labyrint af gennemvejet stier. Så man må nok sige til folk, at hvis det er så vidt muligt holde sig på stier, når de er ude at besøge sådan et sted. Eller gå på de stier, der er tiltrampet i forvejen. Men man skal gå med varsomhed. Nu er det reelt stof. Ja, nu er jeg faktisk en her, som sidder lige to meter foran mig. Så er jeg gå forsigtigt, så man ikke skræmmer dyret. Det er en hand, og det kan man se på bagkroppen er lige. Den er ikke tyk på midten, men det er sådan en, en lige sølv ind om en, en afbrudt ende. Så er man glad. Ja, yes, siger man så. Ja, der er den. <laughs> the black brown argus, like many of the plants in Skagen's point, evolved endemically. Its appearance is different from those found elsewhere in the world. The Danish variant has a few black spots on the underside of the wings. The adult butterfly has developed a proboscis, adapted especially to the flower of the geranium. Where the bloody geranium belongs in Denmark, the beech rose comes from Japan It has no problem with standing the hard and salty winds on the coast, and it can be found growing all over Denmark. Large dune areas along the west coast of Jutland have already been taken over by the Japanese rose. When one removes the rose hip from the dune heath, one takes part in preventing the rose from spreading. They are perfect for soup, jelly and jam. It is important that the rose hip is not just picked and thrown away again. Otherwise it may spring up in new places. Det er jo en stor og vigtig opgave at man passer på de her øh, områder, og derfor var vi jo lykkelige, da vi kunne se at vi kunne komme med i sådan et live projekt, hvor naturstyrelsen er inde over det er staten og EU også bidrager. Det har gjort at øh, noget som er vigtigt for os, som er vigtigt for Danmark, hvor for eksempel kommune jo stod med det, har haft mulighed for at løse den her store og vigtige opgave, så det er en rigtig god historie for os. The battle against the rose is a difficult one, not least in the trackless dunes. In Frederikshavn, they've purchased a machine fit for the purpose. It keeps the roses down and inhibits the plant from spreading. Rydningerne foregår på mange forskellige måder, og vi har støttetiltag til mange af tingene. Forstået på den måde, at vi kan rydde det store det grove, men der er også noget, der skal brændes af simpelthen. Vi har en stor afdeling for afbrænding. Der er noget, der skal græsses efterfølgende. Der er nogle steder, hvor vi hæver vandstanden for at forhindre noget i at genspire. Så den her med at få de forskellige tiltag til at spille sammen, det er rigtig vigtigt for os. Once the sand dune was in the way when the children from the heath needed to get to school or when a courier needed to get to Skagen. He had to drive on the beach. Today, the sand dunes days are over in Kattegat. Nature has let itself run wild in the dunes footprints. Here, we find a myriad of rare species. 
The June tiger beetle is a very fast insect of prey that can catch insects in the air. The sand lizard burrows into the sand to sleep during the night, especially in places where the sun has warmed the sand. The female is fat, her belly is filled with large eggs. The next morning she's delayed. She lays the eggs in the sand at a depth of 10 to 15 centimeters. There is moisture here and the temperature is almost constant. When she gets up, she is clearly slimmer and hungry. But the labyrinth spider won't be enjoying anything today. It is also seldom that we find plants like the northern fir moss, a small and common fir moss. Carnivorous plants such as the round leaf and spoon leaf sundew. The sundew obtains additional nutrients from the insects it catches on its sticky leaves. The carnivorous plants can grow where other plants cannot find nourishment. The Danish orchids also fare well in the nutrient-poor environment. The lesser butterfly orchid, western marsh orchid, and the early marsh orchid. Cotton grass seeds are released in the summer, an impressive sight in the damp areas. The skylark, which was once Denmark's most common bird, enjoys the many insects. Once the female lays eggs, it takes only 20 days for the young to leave the nest. The red bat shrike is one of those rare birds on Hulsey Heath and Greenan. The newly created lands of Greenan are also shaping up. The willow and beech rose are about to turn off the lights for many of the orchids that grow in between the dunes. Fredericksound municipality has made a path through the bushes. This has made room for the dunes' rare wintergreen plants. The small and rare plant sprouts up as evidence of the benefit of removing the invasive roses. In the old lifeboat station, many years of lime washing the walls and perhaps some lime from the masonry has changed the acidity of the soil. Here, the carnivorous common butterwort has found a habitat. There has also been the sudden appearance of the rare marzarine blue butterfly. It also lives on the northernmost area of Skagen Point. In many places, the June heaths are being overgrown by grass. Grass doesn't normally do well on the heath, but gaseous nitrogen from agriculture, automobiles, power plants and shipping makes the grass grow and outperform the June Heath's hardier plants. Burning removes nitrogen and makes it gaseous again. With a little luck, it will fall on the fields next time. The heather is also rejuvenated by frequent wildfires and in August, the heather bushes spring into bloom. Heat, along with the bell heather flowers, make the heath change color. The gray June Heath is no longer gray. It is also at the end of the summer when a small, inconspicuous plant brings forth its berries, bringing the people of Skagen out of their houses. Here up north, but that is tradition, and we spice a tranebær to some fish. It smells really fantastic. There are many folk that think that this is really clever. We just go there and try it. And so come here out in nature and with their own thoughts. Det, det, så går man og kobler lidt af, samtidig med, at man føler sig sådan lidt tilbage til det gamle jægersamfund. Samler, hvor man selv fandt forråd og både det ene og det andet. Der er 100 gram og sådan noget. Men trænevand, de, de, de gruer typisk <laughs> faktisk lige her, hvor vi er nu, sådan lidt på sådan nogle mospuder. Og i øh, lidt, øh, lidt øh, fugtigt område. 
Det er sådan, og så går de jo på sådan nogle, øh, nogle ranker, og man kan plukke dem med, med, faktisk i en del måneder, fordi der er nogen, der er godt, der er godt gemt også. Dem kan man først tage hen, helt hen i oktober måned. Dengang jeg var knejt, der tjente vi faktisk penge ved at plukke øh, mosebølle eller blåbær, som vi kaldte dem dengang. De blev jo solgt i frugtforretningerne heroppe. Det var lidt længere herhen. Der var masser. Så mange er der ikke i dag. Vi kunne sagtens plukke sådan 10 kilo på en dag. It is still possible to find bog bilberries on the heath. Bog bilberries are different from blueberries in that they don't turn one's tongue blue when eaten. Flyer forest has been felled, but there isn't much one can use the gnarled trees for. Det er der er vestkysten er utrolig hård ved med vegetation op. Altså det er ved det er presset af vind, så mange af træerne har krumninger, som gør at det kan ikke bruges til til brugstræs. The trees on the heath are made into wood chips and driven to the power plants in containers. Tornbacker Ridge is rough and impassable. Lighter vehicles transport wood out and stack it. Portåbningen der på visukkeren, den er omkring en meter og 18. Vi kan høre hver gang kniven tager fat. One of Europe's most modern shippers chews through the big stacks. While the project progresses, Briefings are held, where we hear about the background of the project. Tingsmeden har tidligere været en meget hyppig ynglefugl på hederne, fugtige heder, men er nu næsten væk. Vi kender ingen steder her i området, hvor den findes. Der er nemlig det specielle ved den, at hvis man har trævækster, der rager ret meget op i landskabet en meters penge, så bygger den ikke sin rede inden for en afstand af 200-300 meter. Så der skal ikke ret mange træer til på heden, før tingsmeden bliver presset. Og det er en af grundene til, at man gerne vil have ryddet træ. In the dune lakes, one can see the wood sandpiper. It rests here in the spring and autumn, during migration between their breeding grounds in northern Scandinavia and winter staging areas south of the Sahara. Today, there are less than 100 breeding pairs left in Denmark. In two and in southern Jutland, they have gotten them back by making the heat sweater and by regularly removing the mountain pine. The same is also planned at Robjerg and Hulsi Heath. More water also means that fewer mountain pine can germinate. The old drainage channels must be stopped so that water remains on the heath. Animals must graze on the heath, which keeps the trees down and rejuvenates the heather. Cattle and horses are also involved in protecting the June heath's endangered species. The wood sandpiper requires peace in the breeding season from late April to early June. Fortunately, there are many ways to avoid disturbing it and other rare birds on the heath. There is a path leading over Hulsi Heath. You can bike and walk everywhere in the natural areas by following the trails. Nature guide Bo Storm does just this when he shows us around the point's nature and tells us of the trees on the heath. If we look back and look at that way, we can see how the different trees are growing up. De begynder at poppe op. Det er jo selvsåretræer, det er jo ikke nogen, der er plantet. Det er jo fordi, man har engang plantet en plantage her sydfra, der hedder Bunken Glitplantage blandt andet, som værn mod sandflugten. Og så er de jo nået en alder nu, hvor de bliver kønsmåden, og så begynder de at smide deres frø. Og de spreder sig sammen med vinden, og kommer så ud og ligge i sådan nogle områder som det her. Her kan I se, hvor svært det er og se, hvor langt rødderne de går. Men rigtig god ting, hvis man vil hjælpe naturen, det er faktisk, når man går en tur, så er det at rykke det op selv. I stedet for at bare slå det, for så er det, det kommer igen. The mountain firs have spread all over the heath. As long as they are small, they are easy to remove. But they quickly become very large and impossible to pull out, and they begin to release seeds. So the many scattered trees must be removed before even more begin to grow. 
One way is to put a forest down, another type, to clear out the scattered mountain pine. It is slow and cumbersome. The mountain firs often grow side branches and are partially covered in silt. The clearing is done in public areas. Private landowners have also been offered to have their land cleared for the purpose of growth. Many have said yes to being involved in order to protect the unique June Heath on Skagen's Point. The project is progressing. The invasive conifers felled, and in many places, they need only to be chipped. Flying forest and other small groves have disappeared. Thornbagger Ridge is cleared. The largest ridge is once again visible in the landscape. The antlion's larvae have made their cocoons. The pupae are round and camouflaged with sand. One dark night, they hatch. And out of each cocoon, there crawls a full adult antlion. The night raven sings in the night. It lives off of nocturnal flying insects, adult antlions. The adult antlion pumps its wings up. The antlion is a nocturnal insect, an insect few have seen, but part of the diversity, the biodiversity, which belongs to Denmark. Tomorrow's sun will bring warmth to Tornbacker Ridge. The wind will create even more small windbreaks for the antlion's larvae. Keeping the June Heath open is an ongoing job. Anna Jensen is a forest and nature technician and is out to get rid of the last trees and neglected side branches. <laughs> Alt det der ligger rundt omkring, det har stået her på den rod. Men der har man lige glemt at få den sidegren med her. Den sidder ret godt fast. Og det samme, det gælder den her over. Så det vi skal prøve på nu, det er at få hævet dem op, så vi får alt det grønne med. The water levels on the heath are followed and controlled. The rare plants and animals are monitored. Knowledge and data on how the recovery is working has to be compiled. På den lange bane er håbet at vi har et stykke natur herude kun med hjemmehørende arter. Det der hører hjemme på de her klitheder, orkideerne, frøer, tuser, fireben, så videre, det der kræver at der er lysåbent og vi ikke har en konstant trussel med tilgroning af ikke danske træarter. Så den der situation med en klithede, der ligger åben i harmoni med sig selv, med en meget rig biodiversitet, det er det, vi håber, vi har genskabt her.